Well guys, as you can probably tell, I am nowhere near our studio in Portland, Oregon. As a matter of fact, I'm in Tokyo, Japan. What am I doing in Tokyo, Japan, you may ask? Well, I'm glad you asked. Welcome to a very special episode of You Asked, Tokyo Edition, or more specifically, Sony Edition. So here's the deal. Sony flew myself and a couple of other US journalists along with a whole contingent from UK Europe to uh, take us around some of its facilities in and around Tokyo, Japan. There was definitely some tourist stuff that we did. We had a little bit of fun, uh, but there was about two and a half days of solid business in which we learned a lot about what Sony has planned for 2024. They've got some big changes ahead as well as some new products uh, that you know I hate saying this term, but game changer. There's some game changing stuff happening. I'm gonna fill you in on a little bit more about what's happening with Sony in 2024 in just a little bit, but this is a You Asked episode, so let's get to some questions and some answers. But uh, you know what? It's a little crowded around here, a little chaotic. Let's see if we can find somewhere a little bit more chill. Okay, uh, this is much better. Don't get me wrong, uh, Tokyo has been absolutely amazing, but it can get really crazy around here. We found a slightly quieter spot to do some uh, questions and answers, so we'll kick it off with the first question here, which comes from Chris Brown uh, out of Perth, Australia, and he says, is movies anywhere the same as Sony's Bravia Core? I've just purchased a Sony X95L and it comes with Bravia Core. Okay, so no, they are not the same. That's the short answer. Movies Anywhere is sort of like an aggregator service. So whether you bought uh, a Blu-ray and cashed in on the digital code that comes with it, or maybe uh, you bought movies from iTunes when that was a thing, or more recently from Apple, or from Amazon Prime Video, or uh, straight from uh, Vudu, for instance. You can go to Movies Anywhere, get yourself an account going, uh, put in your login information for other services, and it's just gonna take all of the digital movies and TV shows and series that you own and put it all in one place. So it's really easy to access. And as we've discussed in a previous episode, Movies Anywhere tends to have, on average, uh, the best bit rate available. Um, so. I haven't done a comparison directly between, say, Movies Anywhere and streaming uh, something that I've purchased uh, from Apple on an Apple TV. I'd like to take a look at that and see what that looks like because Apple TV tends to deliver pretty great quality, but compared to other streaming services, Movies Anywhere on balance tends to have a higher uh, bit rate and therefore higher quality. If you'd like to see me do a comparison between, say, Movies Anywhere and uh, any of these other streaming services to see what the quality looks like uh, from a subjective standpoint, let me know down in the comments. Uh, I think we'll have time for stuff like that after CES um, when the new products haven't quite come out. Uh, we've got time for that kind of content. So if you'd like to see it, let me know. If I get enough uh, likes from this particular video, maybe we'll make that happen. Um, Anyway, that's Movies Anywhere. Bravia Core is completely different. As you might imagine, Bravia Core is a Sony-specific property, and so the movies uh, and shows that you'll find on that service are all owned by Sony. Now, it's not just Sony Pictures Entertainment, uh, it's other studios that uh, Sony manages, like Columbia Pictures, for instance. But some recent movies you might find there are the new Spider-Man movies. Bullet Train is on there. Ghostbusters Afterlife is on there. Um, Top Gun uh, Maverick, obviously, is gonna be a big one on there. And as we've discussed in the past, Bravia Core uh, offers the highest streaming bit rate available. I believe they call it Pure Stream, if I'm remembering correctly, and it can be anywhere from 30 to 80 megabits per second. Um, so it's significantly higher quality than you're gonna find from competing streaming services. Now, Bravia Core, on a Bravia TV, uh, using the Bravia Core app on that TV offers the best possible experience. Recently, um, I believe they call it Picture Core, uh, for now anyway, and they may be converting Bravia Core over to Picture Core next year across all platforms. Anyway, Picture Core right now is the uh, PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 sort of uh, adaptation of that service. And as Flat Panels HD uh, reported recently, it looks as if 
you can still get access to all that content, but not necessarily at the super high 30 to 80 megabits per second uh, quality level that you get if you're streaming on a Sony Bravia TV. So keep that in mind. Anyway, Movies Anywhere, great platform to stream all your digital entertainment that you own at the best possible quality or on balance at the, the top quality. Bravia Core, very specific to Sony Pictures Entertainment and also very specific to Sony devices, Bravia TVs and the PlayStation 4 and 5. Next one comes from Jean and Peter C, who say that uh, they have a 77-inch Sony A95L, congratulations, and they understand that the audio output is impressive uh, from the TV itself. Is it possible to use the Sony TV as a center channel in combination with their KEF R6 Meta speaker, and would this be something that I would recommend doing? Well, it, there might be a little bit of missing information for me here. You say KEF R6 Meta speaker in the singular. So I wonder if that's a center channel as part of a bigger surround system. It's also possible that you have a pair of the KEF R6 Meta. Um, the R6 Meta is uh, what we call an LCR speaker. That means that you can orient it vertically and use it as a left or right channel uh, in a home theater system. Or you could have it uh, oriented horizontally as a center channel either above or below the television. So I guess I'll give you two different answers depending on the scenario that you actually have. If you have a pair of the uh, R6 Meta uh, speakers from KEF operating as a stereo pair in your system, uh, you could, using an AV receiver, uh, split out the center channel. You'll need the processing in either an AV receiver or a preamp processor uh, to split out the center channel from the surround signal uh, and feed that to the Sony A95L. So the way that might look is, let's say you've got uh, a Marantz AV receiver and you run eARC from the TV out to uh, the receiver. And then that receiver would basically decode the surround signal, whether it's Dolby uh, or DTS. Um, just make sure your receiver understands that you don't have surround speakers in this particular case, or maybe you do, I don't know, it doesn't matter. It's gonna split up the signal into individual channels for you and assign uh, sound to the left channel, to the right channel or left and right speakers, and then to the center speaker. And instead of connecting speaker wire to uh, a speaker, you would connect the speaker wire to the Sony A95L. It's got a little uh, pair of speaker terminals on the back that you can do that with. Uh, if you're using a preamp processor or if your AV receiver has pre-outs for the individual channels, and most of them do, many of them do, uh, you could also run RCA cables from the center channel output of the AV receiver or preamp processor and into the line input of uh, the Sony A95L and accomplish the same task. The advantage to something like that would be that the dialogue would be very much anchored to the television. So for those of you who don't know, the Sony A95L has transducers um, on the back of the screen itself. So the screen makes the sound and uh, the way that it operates is it does a very convincing job of making it seem as if the dialogue and certain effects are coming from uh, the screen itself. And so I can see the appeal on something like that. If you really wanna anchor the dialogue to the screen, that'd be a great way to do it. I will say, however, that the KEF R6 Meta are pretty phenomenal speakers. And because of the concentric drivers that they use, uh, they're capable of uh, creating a great stereo sound image as well as a great phantom center channel. So depending on your setup at home, they may do a great job of making it sound as if dialogue is coming from the TV. However, I will say that when you split up the signal and you get center channel specific information to the TV or to a center channel speaker, um, it's going to yield much better clarity overall. Um, if, however, you don't have a stereo pair of these speakers and you're just talking about you have an existing um, KEF R6 Meta center channel, I have to wonder if you have other speakers involved in this system. I probably would not replace your existing center channel as part of your AV system with the Sony A95L. Um, unless maybe that center channel speaker was well separated from the TV to the point where it really seemed like the dialogue was coming from well below the television or well above it. If for some reason you're disappointed 
um, with the sound that you're getting from that center channel speaker that you have now, I suppose that would be an option. And in that case, you would just move the center channel speaker wire from uh, the KEF speaker up to the Sony A95L for any reason. Do not try to send the same signal to both the TV uh, speakers and then also your center channel speaker. Um, keep in mind that no matter what you do here, the Sony A95L, while it sounds very, very good, is gonna have a different voicing or uh, sort of tonal color or character. And it is not going to match up perfectly with the, the tonal character of your KEF speakers. Might be just fine. Again, the Sony A95L is a very good sounding TV, but when we talk about how good uh, the sound is on this TV, remember we're talking about it sounds great for a TV. It's not really a great substitute for an elaborate AV system. Okay, next question comes from Branko, who says that they just bought a new Sony A80K 65-inch TV, uh, and they want to know uh, how exactly do they calibrate their new TV. Uh, Branko says, I know you have talked about calibration in episode 10, but it was only regarding professional calibration, which is currently, uh, for many reasons, unavailable to them. Uh, thanks in advance and keep up the good work. I'm trying, believe me. Um, so... <sighs> Let's make a, a distinction right off the bat. There is calibration, which is only going to be performed by a professional. It requires measurement equipment um, that is pretty stinking expensive um, and software that is also uh, very expensive, uh, even if the measurement equipment wasn't, the software is. It requires some expertise to it. Um, and that's about getting a TV sort of comply with a, a particular uh, standard. I make that distinction because calibration is the job of professionals. I think what you're wanting to know is how can you adjust your TV to get the best possible uh, output from it. There are a number of ways you could do that. THX has a calibration disc. Uh, Disney Wow is actually a decent calibration disc. Uh, they come with patterns um, and uh, blue filter glasses um, and some other tools uh, to help you kind of dial in the TV so that you're getting the most accurate white point and the most accurate color possible from the TV. With that said, you bought a Sony A80K and the bottom line is the best thing that you could do with that particular TV is to select um, the, the calibrated mode or the cinema mode or the professional mode that's in that TV um, because it's pretty stinking great right out of the box. Unlikely that you're gonna be able to make it much better um, even using those tools that I mentioned earlier. Uh, that's one of the advantages of buying a higher end Sony television. Now the key is to go through and make sure that you do it for all the different apps uh, that you stream from and all of the HDMI inputs that you have. Uh, make sure that you've selected uh, the correct picture mode. Uh, if you're streaming Dolby Vision from uh, any streaming service that has Dolby Vision, make sure that you uh, select either Dolby Vision Dark or Dolby Vision Bright. Um, you can try Dolby Vision IQ if you want, uh, but I'm not a huge fan of it. Now you may find that when watching uh, SDR content, standard dynamic range content, i.e. anything that's not HDR or Dolby Vision, that it's maybe not as bright as you would like it to be. And that's because Sony tends to uh, calibrate its televisions uh, so that the light output is down around 100 to 200 nits. Uh, that's an adherence to a standard, but it's not bright enough for most people. So you may find that you want to turn up the uh, the brightness on the, on the TV in order to get it uh, a little closer to what you would like. But outside of that, honestly, I would not spend a ton of time trying to make uh, adjustments unless you just don't like the way the TV looks. But you mentioned calibration. Calibration aims for a particular standard where um, it's D65 white point. Sony goes a little bit cooler than D65, but still right out of the box, uh, they do a great job. Uh, their colors tend to be very accurate right out of the box. And from there, you just really want to decide how bright you want the TV to be and whether you want motion smoothing or not. I think that's going to that's gonna do great for you. The great news is you bought a solid TV and you don't have to do a ton with it uh, to start enjoying it. Okay, so because we're in uh, Japan, because we've got a flight to catch soon and because we're out in the public and it's uh, about to be rush hour, everybody's about to go home from their job. But I did want to address the fact that we're in Japan and we've met with Sony and what does all that mean? Quite a bit, actually. Unfortunately, most of what I saw is under embargo and it's under embargo, or I, I can't talk about it, until sometime in the spring of 2024, 
when products start to come out. There is some stuff that we can talk about. For instance, I'll tell you right now that Sony has a new 4,000 nit mastering monitor. Now you might think, well, what does that do for me? I mean, you're talking about what's sure to be somewhere between $35,000 and $50,000 professional mastering monitor, 30 inches or so that you'll never buy for your own. Well, I'm going to tell you in a future video why that is a big deal and also why uh, it may not be as big a deal as we want it to be as soon as we want it to be. Uh, and part of that has to do with Hollywood, being Hollywood and kind of being stuck in their way. So we're gonna get into that. There's also some exciting new products coming in 2024. I used the term game changer earlier and I really do mean it. For years, Sony has beat this drum about how it's not how many uh, LEDs you use or how many zones you have in the backlight. Uh, it's how you use that stuff. And they were very cagey about the details around how their backlight system worked. Well, they showed us some things. I learned some really interesting stuff um, and uh, I can't wait to share it with you. We're also going to talk about where Sony is in the, in the TV marketplace and what they're trying to do for the future of television and where their processing is at and, and what that means for the future. So we have footage of things that folks have never seen before. You're going to be stoked to see it. I was stoked to see it. Everybody who was there was stoked to see it. It really was. It was awesome, wasn't it, Zeke? Just yeah. say yes. Zeke said yes. It was awesome. Zeke video recorded it. I ogled it. It was fantastic. If it seems like I'm extremely excited, it is because I am. Um, and I'm frankly just a little bit, uh, I don't know. I'm anxious. I'm impatient. But frankly, guys, I have a flight to catch. A very long 14 hour travel day awaits us and uh, it's going to start at 11 p.m. local time. Uh, and I'm tired, so I'm gonna go. But I hope you appreciated this, uh, this Sony sort of themed episode of You Asked, uh, a little bit more informal than we normally do, but I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly enjoyed making it for you. Uh, I'll see you on the next one. Until then, here's two other videos I think you might like.